we all have this question in our mind why should i aspire for this nirvana state or undrai kanu kachi or do i need this nirvikalpa or uh, you know no discriminatory perspective why it's all needed for me i'm an ordinary guy hmm? surprisingly we all are only working towards that perspective or walks of life the reason is we all want to be happy the pyramid shows the first layer as the pleasure layer then the happiness layer above that is the bliss layer beyond all this is the ananta layer this is how we as humans took shape grew up holding on with pleasures then moved on to happiness understood the concepts of happiness then worked on the blissful states and attaining that ananda is a different ball game though it hmm? now that we all know pretty much about the pleasures happiness etc but here i try to envisage a few at a minimal stage when we all came into this world our brains are not fully formed we started eating sleeping as the minimal level of course we started excreting too that is the basic instincts we slowly caught up with and for to eat we need some grip or some taste ruchi that's what comes so slowly we started on the pleasures and the pleasures helped to hold down to uh, the minimal survival levels without the pleasures of the senses uh, no living being can exist on the face of the earth in the initial phases particularly human beings where their brain is fully formed only in the 25th age something around that blended into our growth as a baby till our adolescent age to uh, man or woman hood adult hood we use this pleasures to cling on as a purpose for survival pleasures then transcend into purpose like we graduate we work on to graduate from schools and colleges that's a huge work and we are happy for that final minute of graduation it's a big work and the resultant graduation a milestone likewise uh, it could be a sport where you practice million times to you know win an award or recognition or it could be a job you work hard to get it's all moments and that moment will turn a permanent happy points so the happiness is a earned position whereas pleasures are for to survival or minimalistic basic instincts so the happiness and pleasure has a counter effect so this pleasures when it is stopped you have a craving for it so it's painful the pleasure the other balancing position or balancing state of mind is pain and for example in happiness the balancing or the opposite in the absence of happiness what we feel is fears insecurities apprehensions so now we will lay out a perspective how yoga defines this okay in science it is hormonal play you can call pleasures or hormonal play of dopamine okay 
that's why the absence of dopamine we feel the pain mm, deprival in case of happiness it's serotonin which plays a role mm. in the absence of serotonin we feel the fear apprehension paranoia etc the motivation is going to be adrenaline another cortisol which is going to play good as well as results in high blood blood pressure etc okay so if we look into the yogic point of view this survival based pleasure based activities can be called a tamoguna okay and the happiness oriented work based serotonin based bodily activities is equivalent to rajoguna it's called rajam rajoguna both are hormonal okay so it has a counterpoint in absence point okay that is why it is called opposites one in case of a pleasure based survival or basic instincts we have it is driven by raga or dvesha like either we like it or we hate it so if we live off at the beginning stage the kids like it or they hate it there is no in between point until the brain slowly integrates it mm, allows it okay how to blend uh, that which doesn't like as a likable one like broccoli for eating okay so the pleasure for senses is like a music for your ears and good food for your tongue have um, good flavor for your nose uh, good feel or air conditioner or heat or whatever you need Uh, climate for your body etc so now think about how it is played out raga dvesha is for pleasure places pleasure uh, evolutionary things happiness for uh, asmita abhinavesha okay asmita is a uh, ego is ego not ism is not there ego you have to have a purpose for that you need an identification you as an individual that is called ego that is good without that no nobody can propel to the next layer or level of a survival or existence okay but the counteracting part is abhinavesha abhinavesha is mm, fears various fear financial insecurity it could be like uh, physical insecurity harassment mental uh, bullying it could be a ton of things that goes inside this kind of abhinavesha so in the absence of asmita that is your motivation eh? the identification purpose the abhinavesha is a counterbalancing one besa beyond all these things you will find now Uh, these two pleasure and happiness are hormonal thing the, what is that beyond state is like when the frontal cortex is fully formed uh, you you have a sense of what you say like gratitude you want to give back without any expectation or uh, all those things is only a frontal cortex area so the gratitude itself is a satvika quality satvika is non hormonal state where the purely based on reasoning or our intellectual capability or call buddhi so this state of evolution the blissful state results out of this non hormonal happiness or pleasure states is more little more perennial than the hormonal states happiness lasts for some days and some forever it reduces the background fears in us whereas the pleasures the moment you the downside is you will have the craving feeling deprival feeling okay depressed feeling all those things so the blissful state requires 
a counterbalance that is a sinking point not a counterbalance so uh, you cannot every day we live we are supported or our one handful of food uh, is because of so many farmers distributors packers mills which make the grains available some make it as a powder some make it as a semi processed food and at last it lands in our table so this we cannot be thanking everybody on day to day basis rather we say they all came off of nature god you call it anything and we dedicate it to that sinking point sinking in electrical terms is the earth is a sinking point where it goes there or we take from there right we can call that it's a generic grid where we give and we take so this blissful state is possible only with the religious mind where you attribute it to a nature god or choice of your god could be any it doesn't matter it could be allah it could be jesus it could be rama sita shivam everything okay whichever you are on here we do with uh, counterbalancing what the reasoning level the the mind want to reason everything so here you do something that doesn't make sense maybe you go around the temple 10 times you light a candle before a statue so you do a lamp before a god lord shiva you write 1000 times rama and do that everything is fantastic it's all only thing is taking the sense out of normal routines which requires sense making i do this here is the consequence right so we do something we do it without any reasoning is what that higher level is all about okay so we will go beyond everything the pleasure happiness and bliss is the mean uh, what we can axim look into our experience within this human body with all this hormonal and intellectual uh, components then what is ananda i told you it's a different ball game but it is possible here and now we will talk about that in the next session